the wind would hit me from the front and the back and the sides all within, you know, a second, it seemed like, at different times. Just boom, 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 hitting me and pushing me all over the place. Nick Walinda is a tightrope walker. One of the highlights of his career was becoming the first person to walk a wire across Niagara Falls. If I looked down, there was water churning beneath me. And if I looked straight ahead, there was actually a heavy mist spraying in front of my eyes, so I couldn't see any solid surfaces anywhere. Nick Walenda is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. You know, Jim, when I hear Nick describe the wire he walks on and some of the conditions and settings he walks in, Mm. it it just seems absolutely impossible to me. It is amazing with a capital A. And uh, we're going to hear Nick describe the wire and what the conditions are like. And he's also going to compare walking the high wire to Walking with Christ. GPS. God. People. Stories. Nick Walenda comes from a long line of aerial acrobats. His great-grandfather, Carl Walenda, brought the family's act to the United States early in the 20th century. Nick says every walk he performs is an expression of honor to Carl, who died during a high-wire walk just a year before Nick was born. He was walking between two buildings in San Juan, Puerto Rico in 1978. He was 73 years old. And uh, the truth is, he shouldn't have been walking a wire anymore. It's one of the challenges of what we do is when you do something that you love so much your entire life, it's hard to retire. But my great-grandfather was too old to be on the wire. And physically, he just wasn't strong enough. He could walk on the wire. But when he encountered a problem, which had to do with rigging, he didn't have enough strength to hold on. With a near far, everywhere you are. With a high low, you'll never let us go. We're not gonna hide. In 2011, Nick and his mom recreated the walk that took his great-grandfather's life 33 years earlier. Nick has followed in his parents' footsteps in many ways, including trusting his life to Jesus Christ. I was raised, both my parents when I was born were born-again Christians and raised in a church at a private school in Sarasota, Florida, and just raised in it. I think I was four years old. My mom recently found my commitment card when I gave my life to Christ. I was about four years old, and the children's minister at the time, he led me to the Lord. And it's really, our family have been Christians for two, three generations now, and my children are four generations. So, as a follower of Jesus Christ, is Nick violating the scriptural command not to test God? By performing these death-defying stunts? Well, you know, I believe that God has given me a gift and a talent that can be used to bring glory to His name. I don't go up there unprepared or untrained saying, well, it's up to God whether I'm going to make it or not, not in any way. I train very long and hard, just like an athlete would train for a sporting event. I train long and hard in my sport, which happens to be wire walking. And the fact is, if I were to lose my life, I definitely know where I'm going. But in no way do I ever, I'm doing what my family's done for over 200 years and seven generations. And I believe God has given me that. And before I do every walk, I always, the last thing I say, or the majority of the time, is give God the glory. Let all the glory go to God for this walk. Nick wants God to be glorified because his faith in Christ is more important than any work he does on the high wire. Something else that's more important than the high wire is Nick's family. I love my wife, three kids, and I'm a family guy, not your typical daredevil, never going out late at night, never. It's just not me. It's just not what I do. Nick often trains about five hours a day, six days a week when he's not performing. That includes weight training and just a lot of time practicing on the wire. Nick holds no fewer than nine Guinness World Records, and the list of stunts is almost unbelievable. For example, walking across a gorge of the Grand Canyon, 1,500 feet off the ground, or walking between two skyscrapers in Chicago. Then there's Niagara Falls, one of the highlights of Nick's career. He became the first person to cross directly over Niagara Falls on a high wire. The 1,800-foot walk took him across the widest part of the falls. So what was it like? You know, it was more peaceful than you would imagine. Yeah, it probably was. Two reasons for that peace, though. Years of training, really decades of training, and faith in Jesus Christ. That's where I find my peace, that peace that passes all understanding. And I believe he's blessed me with the talent that I have and given me an opportunity to use it to give glory to his name 
and that's really where I find the majority of my peace. Love that's higher than stars above, deeper than the ocean blue. All that needs you. If you know Jesus, you know the peace Nick is talking about. But can you imagine the conditions he was experiencing? Walking on a wire only two inches in diameter, high above Niagara Falls? The winds were hitting me from every which direction. I think that was probably the most unique part. Well, there were two, two really unique parts. Generally, when I walk a wire, I have a focal point. Whether it be out of my peripheral vision or straight ahead or to below me, there's always something solid to focus on. Well, one thing that I didn't expect was the fact that as I was walking, I, if I looked down, there was water churning beneath me. And if I looked straight ahead, there was actually a heavy mist spraying in front of my eyes, so I couldn't see any solid surfaces anywhere. So that was very unique. And then the way that the wind worked. The wind would hit me from the front and the back and the sides all within, you know, a second, it seemed like, at different times. Just boom, 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 hit me and pushing me all over the place. We got Usually, high wires are tethered to the ground at various intervals to keep the wire from moving too much. But it wasn't possible to use stabilizers over the falls. So the challenge was extreme. I had never walked on a cable that moved like this. This cable moved back and forth approximately between 10 and 12 inches left and right as I was walking it. There was a lot of bounce up and down. So it was very, very unique. So as far as challenges go in wire walking, this was definitely the biggest challenge that I'd ever faced. Clearly, Nick made it safely to the other side. And get this, when he stepped off the wire, a Canadian customs agent was there to stamp his passport and to ask him the purpose of his visit. It was really unplanned. I mean, I knew I'd have my passport. I didn't really know what was going to happen over there. But I said to inspire people around the world and to carry on a legacy. And that's truly why I do what I do, is to inspire people, encourage people in all walks of life. He wants to inspire and encourage people to follow Jesus. Nick says it's not too hard to draw comparisons between walking with Christ and walking the high wire. You know, I think that in our walk with Christ, there are so many distractions in this world that try to pull us left and right and get us away from that, you know, it's called the devil, that tries to distract you. And it's similar to me on that wire. It's all about focus and attention. And, you know, there's setbacks during training. But as long as we get back up, brush ourselves off, and keep focusing on the other side and staying focused on Jesus Christ and staying focused on our Lord, even through those trials and triumphs, just like, again, when I'm on the wire, I focus on the other side. I don't focus on the falls to my left. I don't focus on that mist. I don't focus on that wind. I focus on the prize, which is on the other side. Take one step forward and So, are you ready to step out in faith and trust your life totally to Jesus Christ? We can tell you more about what that decision looks like. Just go to BillyGrahamRadio.org and click on Grow Your Faith. That's BillyGrahamRadio.org. We've got one more insight from Nick in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Do you know what believe means in the Bible? What, it, what faith is in the Bible? Billy Graham. It's the story that I told the other night about this fellow that came over from France and he announced that he was going to put a tight rope across Niagara Falls and he was going to walk across it. Well, a big crowd of people gathered on both sides of the river and they watched. And sure enough, he walked over and he walked back and they applauded. He did it two or three times and then he took a wheelbarrow and he put 200 pounds of dirt in it and rolled it over and rolled it back and rolled it over and rolled it back. Then he asked, how many of you believe I can roll a man across? And they said, oh, we know you can do it. And so there was one man in the front row that was quite enthusiastic about it. And he said, sir, he said, would you mind stepping in the wheelbarrow and being the first man? Well, that man was gone. I don't blame him. But you see, that's what faith is. You put your total weight in the wheelbarrow. You put your total weight on Christ. 
that's a great picture of trusting Christ, isn't it? Now, Nick Walenda has never pushed a spectator across the high wire in a wheelbarrow, but it is his goal for every one of his walks to glorify God. And not only while he's up on the wire, listen to something that happened as he was preparing for his Niagara Falls walk. So I was in a meeting with the Minister of Tourism and a bunch of high officials in Canada, and they said, there's something magical about you. And I said, well, it's not magical. It's that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I think that example is more important than anything. And I think every Christian in any walk of life is that example that we can bring to people to show, again, not that we're better than anyone, but that there's something different. Have you told any of your friends about GPS, either in person or online? We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and at BillyGrahamRadio.org, and we post new episodes every Wednesday. To follow us on Facebook, just search for Billy Graham Radio. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Thanks for listening to this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. We also want to thank Fellowship Creative for use of some of their great music. And a big thank you to Nick Walenda. I've got a show in about 10 minutes, so I'm going to go to the dressing room and get dressed. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Here we go.